uh, for the purpose of fully uh, capturing the you know uh, what is being said, I would like us to read verses one through um what do you call this one through eighteen. Okay, but we are going to take up eleven through eighteen. But for the sake of our understanding it, I will you no, know, I will play a video of the text that we are going to have, which is one through eighteen. So here we go. Chapter 20 Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, <gasps> Rabboni! Which means, teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord! And she told them that he had said these things to her. All right. So that is a reading of verses 1 through 18. But we will be focusing on verses 11 through 18 today. So yung 1 to 11, if you recall, um, basically the focus is on the resurrection. And the resurrection is so important that without the resurrection, the death of Christ is incomplete. Imagine if he has died and never resurrected. I mean, uh, we cannot just say, well, Jesus died for your sin. Well, if he died for our sin and never resurrected, then he never really was victorious. So resurrection is very, very important. So here is now, at the point in verse 11, Jesus just died Friday, and it is now early Sunday morning, and we see that um, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and found out that the body was gone, right? So verse 11, well, well she realized that the body was gone, now Mary, verse 11, now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. Now, bakit siya umiiyak? Well, we do know that she was expecting the body to be in the tomb. She was expecting to be able to visit uh, Jesus there. And when she found out that Jesus was no longer there, then Mary stood outside of the tomb crying. Uh, if you recall the verse 1 of this text, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. That is the reason why when she went there, 
The body was there, was not there, and so she was crying. Verse 2. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Here's the conclusion of Mary. When she went to the tomb, and the tomb was opened, the, 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 the stone was taken away, and there was no body uh, inside the tomb. Her conclusion, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. Now, itong day, I don't know whom she is referring to, whoever it may be, it could be the, in her mind, it's the Pharisees who took it away, the Sadducees. In her mind, it could be the Romans. Uh, in her mind, it could be somebody else. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. So this is a statement, not even a question. She was not saying, oh, did they take the, 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 the Lord out of the tomb? No. It's a statement. They have taken away. Then we don't know where they have put him. So she is very, what's the word? Sigurado, sigurado siya. In a less telling katawan ni Jesus. And if you take note, this is an exclamation point. I mean, she was really definite. They took his body away. No wonder, um, um, you know, um, when Mary Magdalene was there, she is, how would we call it? She is a unbelieving believer. Okay? Uh, we will talk about that uh, a lot more. It will be the focus for tonight. That there are people who are unbelieving believers. They are believers, but they are unbelieving. Okay? Kind of ironic, but um, that's definitely true. There are a lot of people, even today, who are unbelieving believers. So, in verse 9 from last week, which I think is a core uh, core reason why they are unbelieving believers, because it says in verse 9, John makes a comment about the rest of the disciples. He says, they, the disciples, still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. I think this is a very good uh, description of a unbelieving believer. That a unbelieving believer, this is just Mike, okay? This is just my definition. A unbeliever, an unbelieving believer is a believer in Jesus. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ, and yet somehow are not familiar with Scripture, does not know exactly what Scripture is saying, or knows the Scriptures but not understand Scriptures. I think there are a lot of Christians even today now who goes to church, Bible study, read Scriptures, and yet somehow is having difficulty, challenges in not truly holding on to the Word of God, especially prophecy. Uh, kami ni Danny, by the way, nag-start kami ng our connection once again, you know, a uh, couple of years ago, because of prophecy. Prophecy is something that Scripture speaks about that is to happen. And Jesus in scriptures have been prophesied both in the Old Testament and by the words of Jesus himself that he needs to die and that he would die and that on the third day he would rise again. But somehow it went from one ear to the other. Somehow the disciples who were Jewish in background studied the Old Testament, read Isaiah, read Jeremiah, that spoke all about uh, the, the resurrection and the coming of Christ, but somehow did not understand. No wonder even Jesus, um, uh, in the book of Matthew 13, he who hears and understands. And understanding means accepting, knowing, 
that what is said is going to come true. It's going to happen. So let's move on. That's Mary Magdalene. And John the Apostle makes this comment in verse 9 about not just Mary Magdalene, but all the disciples, they, that's a plural, didn't understand from Scripture. So no wonder, here's the result of a person who does not understand. She, oh, sorry. She, oh, sorry, ano nangyari sa ano ko, screen? Hold on, hold on. Uh, ako na wala yung screen ko. Uh, hold on na. Okay. No wonder Mary was crying. When in fact, as we look at it right now, in history, supposedly, supposedly, any Christian, any believer, who truly heard what Jesus said, who truly read what Scripture said about his death and resurrection, should have been rejoicing. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! But a person, a Christian, who does not understand, that's the words of Jesus, that's not, uh, the words of uh, John, describing disciples, who doesn't understand, instead of being joyful, was crying. Now, let me jump to some uh, conclusions now. A lot of Christians today, watching and looking at things going on around us, can either be joyful or the extreme opposite, to be crying. Based on not understanding scriptures. Then verse uh, 11 part B. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. So sinilit niya. Remember, Peter and John was already inside. So as she went, she bent over to look into the tomb. And so two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. One at the head and the other at the foot. Now, I think it is the grace of God. Purely the grace of God. Why? Because Mary Magdalene technically did not believe that Jesus resurrected. She believes that the body of Christ was stolen, that they took him away. And yet, in her unbelief as a believer, okay, unbelieving believer, the Lord still sent her two angels to speak to her about the body of Christ. Now, uh, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, a very interesting verse. Hebrews says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve, look at this, whom, whom are the angels sent to serve? Those who will, future tense, inherit salvation. Oh, is that so beautiful? I mean, part of the ministry of the angels are to minister to those who will inherit, those who are elected, those who have been chosen before the foundation of the world, that they might inherit salvation. Now, <clears throat> the death of Christ on the cross is a major part of salvation. There is no salvation without believing that Jesus rose from the dead. I repeat, from the lesson from the previous two weeks, no? um, there is no salvation without knowing and believing that Jesus rose from the dead. Because if you don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, then therefore, he never was victorious over sin. So even the angels, in her unbelief as a believer, the Lord sent to explain to her what has happened. So these, these are the angels. Verse 13. They asked her, the angels asked her, Woman, why are you crying? <laughs> now, obviously, it's obvious that she was crying because in her mind, 
Jesus' body was stolen. Ninakaw. Her response, They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. She was even worried that she does not know where the body was placed. Tinapun ba? Tinago ba? I mean, that's the reason what makes her worried. And that's what makes her cry. Again, John says, they still didn't understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. They did not know. So, that is what made her cry. 14. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. Very important verse. Look at this very carefully. Mary Magdalene, in her mind, in her mind, Jesus' body was stolen. Here's the, you know, very powerful talaga ang mind, no? Because even our physical eyes have seen what has happened, that the body of Jesus is no longer there. If the mind says, ninakaw yung katawan, even though you see the proof of that person, you will still not see it. So, when she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, next line, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. See this word? Did not realize? Did not understand? It does not click with her mind. Because in her mind, there is no picture, there is no understanding of Jesus' resurrection. In her mind, Jesus' body was stolen. So even though she saw Jesus face to face, her conclusion, she is not Jesus. He is not Jesus. He, she did not realize that it was Jesus. Is that interesting? I mean, you and I, uh, we can look at scriptures and look at black and white and see what scripture says. But if there is no understanding and there is no belief, if things we see in the physical, we still met, cannot make the we cannot make the connection with what is in the physical and what is what is spiritual in scriptures. Look at what she concluded, verse 15. Oh, Jesus first. He asked her, Jesus asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Same question with the angel. But tell me, who is it you are looking for? This is Jesus speaking. It's almost like saying, Hello, I'm in front of you. <laughs> and then here's what uh, Mary Magdalene uh, said Thinking he was the gardener. Isn't that interesting? I mean, some say that uh, Jesus' features, yung mukha niya, when he had risen the dead, is totally glorious that hindi mo, hindi mo, ano, hindi mo identify That's one possibility. The other possibility that I'm thinking of, which is I am more inclined to, that Jesus, when he resurrected, looks exactly as he was at this point. Except that when people's minds are blocked, believing something else, that even though you see it right in front of you, you cannot make the connection. And her and her uh, understanding, thinking he was the gardener, if I may add, who looks like Jesus, that he is the gardener, another person, who, who just have the eyes of Jesus, the hair of Jesus, the nose of Jesus. But somehow, he is not Jesus. Because in her mind, Jesus is dead. His body is in the tomb as of last night. And right now, as she was standing there, his body was stolen. So her mind and her understanding and what she sees on the physical does not much and she seemed to be inclined more on the physical so she said to the gardener who was jesus sir 
if you have carried him away, <laughs> you know, accusation, pa, oh. if you, ikaw, gardener, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Um, not only does she not understand, um, you see, you're going to be accusing, well, she was accusing the gardener who, I I mean, if, if she thinks that he was a gardener, why in the world would she ever even accuse him of carrying the body away? What's the relationship of a gardener? There's no garden inside the tomb. But, you know, uh, Dan, you have been to the garden tomb, right? So, so Israel today. But, I mean, how in the world can you conclude that? Except when you are being unreasonable because you do not understand scriptures. People become unreasonable if they do not know, they do not understand scriptures. Jesus said to her, I, I, I think obviously this is in a text version. We don't know exactly how it was said to Mary. But I would say, Jesus' voice would have been something like, Mary! I mean, hello, Mary! Hi, Mary! He turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni! Which means, Peter. Mary had to have something else to push her to recognize, to understand that what has been said about Jesus and what Jesus said about himself is going to happen or has happened. He has resurrected from the dead. So Mary in her mind now makes a conclusion not only is this man not the gardener, not only is this man looks like Jesus, he is Rabboni. He is Jesus, my teacher. 17. He has said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. What does it mean, do not hold on to me? Well, we will presume Right now, that she, uh, Mary, I don't know, embracing Jesus, holding on to Jesus, but just said, Mary, do not hold on to me. Why? It is yet incomplete. I still have to ascend. I already have died. I already have resurrected. But I still have to ascend back to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father. And your father to my God and your God. Now, what she was to communicate that Jesus was still going to ascend. Jesus did not say, Mary, go to the to my brothers, go to, this, to the other disciples and tell them that I have risen from the dead. He didn't say that. What he said was, tell them that I am ascending. This is far more than just resurrecting from the dead. This is the next, if I may use the word, this is the next chapter in what Jesus' ministry is all about. He came, become flesh. Okay, that is uh, the doctrine of incarnation. Then after becoming flesh, born of the Virgin Mary, he died on the cross. He resurrected from the cross. Then the next chapter is, he is going to ascend back to the Father. So that is what the message is going to be for the other disciples. Verse 18 Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. So that's the first statement. Then she told them that he had said this thing to her. So that is where Mary explained, disciples, Jesus resurrected. He said he's going to ascend to the Father. He is alive and so on. So let's go back to verse 16. Let's go back to what has happened. Mary went to the tomb. 
believing that Jesus is still dead and will always be dead. And when she went there, she was heartbroken, thinking that Jesus' body was stolen. The two angels showed up. Mary, why are you crying? She turned back and saw Jesus, but did not realize it was Jesus because she did not understand. Another way of saying, she did not believe that Mary rose, uh, that Jesus was from the dead. Then Jesus said, Mary, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. So let us try to learn something from this. Do not hold on to me. Uh, what does this mean? Do not hold on to me. Do not stop me from doing the next thing that I need to do, which is to ascend to the Father. Oh, why? Let me just say this again. Let me jump for a moment. Uh, let me see here. Let me show you, in hopefully in a better graphic form, the ministry of Christ. Of course, uh, I'll not be saying every detail of his ministry, but just the, the, the big chunk of the ministry of Jesus. Number one, incarnation. Jesus came, sent by the Father to this world because this world is on its way to hell. And this world in itself, the, the word world here is humanity. And in this world, there is no way for them to redeem themselves. So Jesus had to come to redeem those whom the Father has chosen. So he came, incarnation. He came here, lived a life uh, for 33 years. Then he died for our sin, crucifixion. So incarnation has been said, prophesied in scriptures. And nobody... Let me, let me go back here. In incarnation, no human being can stop and prevent Jesus from coming to this world. There was nobody else. Okay? There, there was nobody in heaven who said, Jesus, no, 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 you cannot be, you cannot go to, you cannot go to earth. You cannot uh, be incarnated. No. The Father, the Holy Spirit, which are one, sent Jesus. Go. Crucifixion is the plan of God that Jesus would die for the sin of man. Now, what is interesting here, as we will go to in the text later on, that Peter tried to prevent Jesus from dying. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Next, resurrection. Well, resurrection... Again, nobody can stop him because even sin and death cannot hold Christ because he, is, he, he has lived a perfect life. So he resurrected from the dead. The next is ascension. And as we will see here, uh, Mary was holding on to Jesus. And Jesus said to Mary, Mary, do not hold on to me. Do not try to prevent me from going to the next level. So Mary is in a very, in a way, very same boat as Peter, who was preventing Jesus from dying on the cross. Now Mary, so excited to see Jesus, was holding on to him. But that's not the end of the ministry of Christ. The Bible tells us that he has to ascend to, he to heaven, then he is now presently his ministry is interceding for the saints, for all believers. Then the day would come that the Lord will glorify all the saints. He would come back and return to this world and get us out of here. So that is the ministry of Christ. And if we go back to our text, as I mentioned, um. In the crucifixion portion, we see Peter. Peter obviously was a Jew. 
Peter knows the Bible, the Old Testament. I am sure, quite sure, that he has been a, quote-unquote, faithful attendee. He goes to the synagogue, hears the reading of scriptures, have read Isaiah, read a book of Psalms, which speaks about the coming of the Messiah, the dying of the Messiah. He also was with Jesus for three years. And for three years, Jesus said, I am going to die. And on the third day, I am going to rise from the dead. But that words of Jesus that he would die is not accepted by Peter. Matthew 16, 21-23. From that time on, Jesus began to explain. Okay? He did not just say, he explained to his disciples, which includes Peter, that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day raised to life. Now Peter got stuck up with the word killed. Jesus, you are going to be killed? I believe you are the Messiah. You are our Savior. I read from scriptures in the Old Testament that uh, it has been prophesied that the Messiah would come and die. You told me for the past three years that you will be killed. And yet look at the response of Peter. Next verse. Peter took him aside. Remember, Jesus was speaking to all the disciples. Peter had a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. He pulled him aside and began to rebuke him. <laughs> Who's rebuking who? Peter rebuking Jesus. Don't talk like that. Don't ever say anything like that. Never, Lord. Interesting, huh? Peter calls Jesus Lord, but at this point, Peter was acting as the Lord of Jesus. Never, Lord, he said. This, you're dying, this shall never happen to you. You know, sometimes our people get to think that we are smarter than God. We think that we know more than God. Uh, if you perhaps even look at your own prayer, um, maybe there are times that when we pray, we're actually dictating to God what is best to happen. Okay? We, we pretty much act like Peter. So anyway, this is uh, what Peter said. Response of Jesus to Peter. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. When Peter spoke things against what was written, what was prophesied, and Peter going against the very teaching of Christ. That is when Satan's influence is the greatest. When we, you and I, think otherwise than what scriptures have said, hmm, who is influencing us? The same person that has influenced Satan, uh, influenced Peter. Then Jesus says to Peter, Peter, you are a stumbling block to me. Not to the other disciples. To me. Why? Why is Peter becoming a stumbling block? Peter, this is what I came for. I didn't just come here for 33 years to tour Jerusalem. I didn't just come here just to, to be with you guys, you the 12 or the 11. I'm not just here for that purpose. I am here to save every single person whom the Father has given me, both in the past, in the present, and those who will believe in the future. Don't stop me from accomplishing that. You are being a stumbling block. You do not have in mind, aha, uh -huh. where's the battleground? In mind. 
Brothers and sisters, mga kapatid, our mind is the battleground. If you have wrong doctrines in your mind, your conclusions will be off, will be out of sync. If I may be more direct, your thinking will be that of Satan. You don't have in mind the concerns, here you go, of God. You do not have the mind of God. You do not think like God thinks. You do not mind what, what God plans. You do not have you do not concern what God concern. So what then is your concern if it's not God's? Merely human concerns. And oftentimes, our, my concern. Wow. That is such a rebuke. And this is what Jesus is saying. Uh, when he said here, let me go back to that. Um, here. Jesus came, was born in the Virgin Mary. When Jesus says, I'm going to die, I'll be crucified. Peter said, no way. Don't talk like that. If Jesus did not die, if Jesus did not die, then he could not be resurrected. Because only those who died can be resurrected. Only if Jesus died, is Jesus be able to be victorious over sin. And Peter, in his own concern, not thinking what God's concern is, was preventing Jesus from crucifixion, and thus, prevent Jesus from resurrection. So, let's go back to Peter. So, Jesus says, Peter, your concerns are, are only human concerns. And I think this is something that we have to think about. No? Um, whatever happens in the world, sometimes we don't want to accept it because it's affecting us. Uh, and we really, we're only just thinking about ourselves when in fact God has a much bigger plan for the whole world and not just necessarily for us. Mga kapatid, we have to remember this. Your biggest problem, if you are in Christ, if you truly have been born again, if you have been justified, your biggest problem and your only major concern is this, which is God's concern, that you already have been taken out from the pits of hell. Okay? Sometimes, um, you know, we are looking far more than that. And so we cannot accept and um, let the sovereign will of God happen to everything else that is happening around us. Anyway, let's go back to that later on. Okay. Um, so let's go now to Mary, Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, on the other hand, um, was preventing Jesus. Let me go back here. Okay. Jesus is resurrected, he's alive. Mary, Rabuni, Rabunai, yeah, hey, buhay ka, you're alive. And she was holding on to Jesus. And Jesus says, Mary, do not hold on to me. I am going to my father and tell my other disciples, I am going to ascend. Because Mary was holding on to Jesus. That is technically preventing Jesus from ascending. It's almost like Mary telling Jesus, do not leave us like that again. But Jesus is saying, Mary, I already told you. I told Peter. I told the disciples. I explained it. I have to die. And on the third day, I will rise and go back to the Father. As a matter of fact, 
just a, a few chapters earlier, Jesus said, I have to go. And when I go, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. So if you keep on holding on me, Mary, not letting me go, then you're preventing the Holy Spirit to come and advocate. Who will be your guide? Who will be your teacher? So, let's go back. There's Mary. Let's take a look at Mary. Jesus said, Mary! Okay, 16, then 17. Do not hold on to me. I'm going to be gone again. Now, this hold on is not necessarily physically holding Jesus. It could be. But holding on is, do not let this thing happen again. You disappearing from us. You've been gone for three days. And we were all so worried. Do not hold on to me, Mary. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. It's not complete yet. As a matter of fact, Mary, not only you, tell the rest that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So tell the rest of the disciples. Don't hold on to me. Don't put your hopes high that I will now continually stay with you. Nope. Why? Because after the ascension, I have to go to my ministry in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for the church. And then the day would come in the future would I would when I would come back and glorify you, the saints. But not now. Not yet. I have to ascend to the Father. I have to go back. So, let me just say this. For you and I today, we are, the, the, the thing that Jesus did is already in the past tense. He came, which we celebrate Christmas every year. That is the celebration of Jesus' incarnation. He became man. He died on the cross and resurrected from the cross, which we are celebrating every year, which is coming very soon, April 9, Resurrection Day, or Easter. His interceding for us is happening right at this moment. Even as you and I are in this Bible study right now, the Lord is praying for you and me right now. And what is yet to come is, his, uh, uh, is the rapture, is the glorification of the saints, which he would come in the clouds and you and I would meet him in the air. That is yet to come. So, we saw Peter, we saw Mary, and many today has the same issue with Peter and Mary. Let me bring you to Timothy. Also, let, let's start with Peter. Peter says to his readers, above all, you must understand. Okay. Sounds familiar? Must understand, must know that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. Now, I know, you know, the world is getting, moving from bad to worse. But sometimes, uh, I mean, we, we hear wars, earthquakes, and everything. Oftentimes, our prayer is, Lord, stop them all. Stop the war. Stop the unification of Russia, Iran, Turkey, China. I mean, stop all of this. Bring peace. But sometimes we forget that there is the grand plan of God. And the prophecies of the Lord that these things are going to happen. Matthew 24, for example, is a prophecy of the Lord when the disciples ask, when are you coming back? What are the things that are going to happen? Well, read Matthew 24. Jesus said, there will be wars, rumors of wars, there will be famine, there will be earthquakes, and so on. But somehow, when these things are happening, we tend to not even consider 
what Jesus has said needs to happen before his return. So for a believer, for me, for example, yes, it is true that I would like to pray for those affected by the earthquake in, in Turkey, in Syria. Yes, that's one side of me, that there are people who are suffering, who lost their homes, who lost their businesses, their, their source of living. Um, I mean, yeah, that's true. But on the other side of me, I'm saying, wow, Jesus is coming soon. Why? Because that's what the word of God says. That's what he said. Then he says here, scoffers will come and scoffing following their own evil desires. Next. They will say, where is this coming? Where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, aha, uh -huh, here's a clue. Ever since our ancestors died, what does that mean? Who are these scoffers? Who are these scoffers scoffing? Well, our ancestors, that means they're either fellow Jew because they are referring to fellow ancestors. We have ancestors Abraham, Jacob, Isaac. So our fellow ancestors. And yet, they were scoffing that Jesus is not coming back. Now, it's also possible that these are not only Jews. That this could actually be people in the church, some people in the church, who are getting tired of waiting for the Lord's return. Where is this coming? Because they heard that promise. Okay, Where is this coming? He promised. Then they said, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. There's nothing new. There's nothing going on. You've been talking about rapture for the past two decades. Where is it? There's been earthquakes before. There has been wars before. There's been famines before. So what's the difference? It's nothing. It's the same banana. Another text. Titus 2. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. So what is this verse 11? This is the Lord's coming when he came to die for the sins of the world. Right? So the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Verse 12. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. So the one thing about salvation, and by the way, people always tell me, how do you know you are saved? You know you are saved? One, one, uh, one clue, you start to say no to ungodliness. You also say no to worldly passion. And you say, living self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. You start to live a godly life. Okay? So that's verse 12, then verse 13. Here is what Christians need to be doing. Not scoffing, not like the Peter, but this one. While we wait for the blessed hope. Oh, what is this hope? What is it that we're looking forward to? This happy hope. Blessed means happy. This blessed hope. What is that? The appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sometimes, you and I, we call Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. But when things in this world are moving from bad to worse, we say, wag sa namangyari yan. But the Lord said in scriptures that these things must happen before the Lord returns. It's a question. Do you want the Lord to return? But you don't want these things to happen. These things have to happen before the Lord returns. I mean, I, 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 you see, the reality is this. Yes, we don't want, you know, we don't want the economy to uh to collapse. We don't want um uh, you know, the COVID-19, COVID-20, COVID-30 to happen. Uh, we don't want uh, wars to happen. We don't want earthquakes to happen. 
But all at the same time, the culmination of all these things must happen. Then the Lord returns. So, he said, we need to be waiting for the blessed hope, the return of the Lord. Corinthians. If anyone does not love the Lord, let that person be cursed. Let him go to hell. You and I, on the other hand, should be shouting, Come, Lord, Maranatha. And with that, the expecting and wanting the Lord to return, we can expect that this world will move from bad to worse. Romans 1, he turned them over. That homosexuality would arise. Fornication and adultery would arise. These things must... The, the, what do you call this? The, uh, I mean, the mind... Uh, oh, I forgot. Oh, Romans 1. That uh, they, they think uh, illogical. Okay? Uh, now man can be woman and a woman can be man. I mean... Depraved mind. Depraved mind. There you go. Thank you, Roxanne. Depraved mind. Now, are these things happening? Wow, big time. So, if these things are happening, one could be, this will, you know, uh, sink your heart and say, oh no, grabe talaga mundo. Or, praise the Lord, He is coming back soon. So, again, the Lord's, uh, the Lord's ministry, technically, has not been completed yet. When he said on the cross, it is finished, it is finished, the salvation is now paid for. Sin has been paid for. But it is unfinished as far as the total redemption of, uh, of his people. That is why we said, we say, we have been saved, we are being saved, and we will be saved. Past, present, and future. If you are in Christ, you already have been saved. You are now perfect in the sight of God. You already have the approval of God. You are now accepted uh, uh, before God. We are being saved because we are still living in this body. There is still um, the fight, the battle uh, with sin. We are still being tempted and so on. Then in the future, we will be saved when we will be totally glorified to be uh, with Christ, to live with God, in the new heavens, in the new earth, and Revelation says, where at that time, there will be no more tears. No more tears. That's future. Has not yet happened. So, incarnation is done. 2,000 years ago. Crucifixion is done. It is finished. His resurrection is done. He rose from the dead. He ascended it is done. Present interceding for us, for the saints. And in the near future, and there are so many signs that we are closing to this point. That is the glorification of the saints. The coming back of the Lord, which begins with the rapture. And as we look at things going on around us, they are all pointers that he is coming soon. That is our blessed hope. That is what we are looking forward to. You, you, you know, uh, I, I don't know about you, but ako, ako si Mike, I always follow the news that is happening, particularly in the Middle East, in Israel in particular, and its surrounding neighbors. I am following the news of the, uh, you know, what's going on in Israel right now. The, uh, uh, Right now, Anglusa Israel, you know, because of the, um, yung, what they, they're trying to change the system. Netanyahu uh, is trying to change the governmental system. So there's a lot of demonstration week after week after week. And um, we see recently, just this past week, Saudi Arabia has, re, uh, what do you call this, uh, has normalized its relationship with is uh, with uh, Iran, which is its mortal enemy, Saudi and Iran are mortal enemy. You must say, oh, but they are the same Muslim. No, they are the same Muslim, but 
there are two kinds of Muslim, the Sunni Muslim and the Shiite, Shiite Muslims. These two do not see eye to eye. But Saudi has normalized, which surprised the whole world. It surprised Israel. It surprised America. More so the one who the, the one who brokered this relationship is China, not US. China is getting its grip in the whole of Middle East more and more. US is so weak. Napakahina ng America right now. It, that our you know allies in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia would hold hands with Iran and brokered by China. Now, in a way, these are all bad news. Okay, bad news. Israel is divided. Its enemy, his major enemy, Iran, has now a normalized relationship with Saudi. When in fact, right now, they are saying that Saudi Arabia might be another Abraham Accord member. So what is that now? Will it is it gone in the wind now? Uh, Russia and uh, Iran and Turkey has its military in Syria, border of uh, land border with Israel. Lebanon just two days ago had a terrorist come in and blow up a, a bomb. Thank God, nothing one died, but a terror. It almost again. It's not in the you know in a major news network. Just a couple of days ago. A war could have been triggered again between Israel and Lebanon. So these are the news I'm I'm following because scriptures, all its um, indicators, is really based on what's happening in the Middle East, starting with Israel. So if you're not aware of things going on there, then obviously you cannot see, um, you know, you, you cannot see what's going on. In relationship to scriptures. No wonder in verse 9, even though it was said in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the disciples knew about it, that the Messiah would come and he would die. Jesus taught them for the past three years, I would die, third day be resurrected. John says, they, the disciples, still at that point did not, it's a negative understand so it's possible to have the information in our mind but somehow it's not a reality it, it's just an information ah alam ko na yan alam ko na yan but what we truly understand really as we can see here would dictate our actions Mary Magdalene when she went to the tomb and saw the tomb empty, she knows in her mind from the Old Testament, from the teachings of Christ, explained that he would die and rise on the third day. She knows it in her mind. But when she saw the tomb empty, she was crying. She was weeping. So, question for all of us. I know many of the things of scriptures we already know in our mind. The question is, do we truly understand? So, can you see from what is going on around us in relationship to scriptures? Do you see uh, what is death in relationship to scriptures? Do you see the problems that you and your family are going through in relationship to scriptures. Do you see, uh, 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 you know, um, I, again, anything and everything going around you in relationship to scriptures? Because if you do not see it, like for example, death, uh, Paul said in First Thessalonians, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to grieve like the rest of the world. Because the rest of the world do not have hope. But you and I know that if any brother and sisters in Christ who dies, he is in a far better situation. 
So when I die, okay, rejoice. Buti pa si Mike. You know, uh, some of my brothers and sisters and other relatives, when two of my siblings, brother and sister, died uh, two years ago, uh, within two or three months gap between the two. And, you know, we were all sitting in our sharing. I said, and I said this, buti pa sila. <laughs> uh, obviously, a lot of people did not understand what I meant. Um, I think I said that in a, in a wrong crowd, buti pa sila. But frankly speaking, that is really what I feel. Buti pa sila. Wow. So, Jesus told them, Job told Mary, Mary, go tell my disciples what I have told you. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Um, that is what I really would like to talk about uh, as John 20, 11 to 18. That, you know, we, you and I have been studying the book of Romans, the book of John, uh, close to three years total, I guess. Um, we have a lot of information, a lot of information. But do we truly understand? How do you react now when you are facing a problem? Do you see Peter when he says that um, uh, problems, persecutions will only make you uh, grow in the Lord? Do you see that? Or do you see your problem as a problem only? Uh, do, you, do you read the news and see what's going on in the world? Or do you see them in relationship that these things must happen before the Lord returns? Yes. Yes. We we'll see it that way. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's open the floor for Q and A. Question. Okay, comment. Mike, yes. Yeah, Mike, uh, yes, Carlos. Uh, sa pag-aral po natin and sa book nito, na realize ko sa buhay ko na uh, particular this study na that is not the end. There uh -huh. is a future life. Yeah. Ito yun, sana po. Tapos, yung pangalawa, yung we can be certain of our resurrection because Jesus resurrected. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Pangatlo po, yung isip ko na truth dito is yung resurrection ng Panginoong Isus is the key to my faith. Yung ang, yun ang magiging key ko na siya ay nag-resurrect. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mga realization ko yeah. sa pag-aaral yeah. Very true. Kaya nga, no, uh, studying, and we have to be very careful about this. Bible study, going to church, it is not the being present. It is not just the, ay, alam ko na, ay, na-memorize ko na. It's not that. It is when you start to see things going on in your life, in your family, in your surrounding, in relationship to scriptures. That is when you truly know that you understand. Okay. Very important. Anyone else? Yes, Dan. Uh, Mike, uh, I share the same uh, conviction with Carlos. That, uh, once you understand you have the big picture, have a biblical worldview, mm -hmm. you're not bothered by things that are unfolding before us. Because parang sini alam na natin ending. Eh. So <laughs> why, why? Yeah. It makes us exciting na malapit na talaga. So, yeah. no no problems can uh, un, uh, un, uh, settle us. No, try us. Well, eh. Testing, that makes us a stronger, per, a stronger yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah, na, see, but that, that's the observation dapat sa uh, mga unbelievers. Why this, the Christians are not shaken by these things that are, being, that are unfolding before us. Like, mm -hmm. ngayon, economic collapse, di ba? Yung financial collapse sa uh, America, mga big businesses. Yeah, mga banko. No? Banko. Uh, collapsing uh, economy. Uh -huh. oh, it seems, yeah, the, the truth is the world is not getting any better. Mm -hmm. The best is yet to come when we get there, sa heaven, or uh, when Jesus comes back. And sa millennium, sa eternity, sa new heavens and new earth. That's what we are looking forward to. But itong issue nga, Dan, that even, not, not the world, okay, that the, the, the church, the church a huge portion of the church is ignorant of the things to come, of prophecy. And 
a big chunk of the church, their concern is human concern, not God's plan. Diba yun nasabi ng text na you're, you're thinking maybe of human, human uh, concern. Paano na yung buhay ko? Paano na yung kakainin ko bukas? Paano na yung the now? Yung health ko? Yung the now? They, they, they don't see, as Paul said, to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. They don't see that. They know that. Okay, They have memorized that. But they don't understand that. Totally different when you start to understand. Mary knows. Ano, anong tinuro ni Jesus the past three years? Oh, he said that uh, he is going to die, that on the third day he will rise again. She knows that. But when it was in front of her, she was weeping and crying. Okay. Mike? Yes, when? Sige. Uh, may you share din ako along the lines that uh, of what every everyone is sharing, mm -hmm. and uh, I I would even want to say na sa pagintindi ng doctrine, na hindi lang yung scriptures, but yung mga doctrines talaga like what uh, you have shown us, uh, incarnation, uh, crucifixion, and so on, no, mm -hmm. ascension. Um, nagiging mas higher din yung pagkakilala natin kay God. Exactly. And uh, sa akin nga it's as as the the higher purposes of the Lord is being revealed, mm -hmm. uh, sa kanyang uh, sa kanyang work of you know, uh, you know work to glorify Himself, you know, eventually don't talaga papunta yun ang pinaka big picture jan. Uh, he he reveals yung mga higher virtues mm -hmm. uh, ng ng sarili niya, no? Uh, what am I saying? For example, um. Uh, Yung, yung faith, no? Uh, faith is something not that this is work. So, naintindihan natin that it is because of God's sover sovereignty. Mm -hmm. It's according to His will. And it is something that He has decreed even before the foundation of the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, and yung, yung blindness ni ng mga tao, similar to yung kay Mary Magdalene, na hindi niya kaagad nakilala si God. Uh -huh. Kung hindi ni God Parang Mary, parang yeah, nireveal na niya yung sarili niya, di ba? Uh -huh. Hindi nakikita. I think ganun din sa mga tao kung kanino uh, reprobated or hindi nire-reveal ni God at pinapakita yung sarili niya sa kanya. No? Um, now, how, how this is, is this uh, connected? Very important kasi yung mga susunod na mangyari. I, I, I love it that... that uh, you, you even started with Peter, yung Satan, get thee behind me. Because uh -huh. im imagine what Peter was trying to stop. Now that we know kung ano talaga yung work of salvation na ginawa ni Christ, di ba? Yeah. So talaga, Satan talaga ang source nun, Satan. And we I, we can see this in our, in ourselves, uh, as you mentioned, when, when we are also in that state of unbelief where hindi natin sinasubmit yung sarili natin doon sa higher will and purposes ni God. Mm -hmm. And we we go back to our human perspective at mm -hmm. yung sa sarili, yung self-serving na naman, yung para sa sarili na naman natin ang inuuna natin at binibigyan ng importance, di ba? Okay. So, I I wanted to add nga na kung hindi nag si Jesus, hindi din niya ibibigay yung Holy Spirit. Uh, the advocate, diba? Exactly. Who will exactly. know, right? Who will work out the his ministry of what sanctification, diba? Sa, sa, mga, sa mga believers. Yeah. Uh, yung illumination, and so that we can pray according to the will of God, and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Uh, kung hindi siya nag -ascend. So, why do we cling to Christ, the physical incarnate Christ, Huh? Eh, mas, mas matindi pa yung mga mangyayari afterwards, diba? according to the plan of God. So, yeah. uh, while you were explaining, this was really on my mind, uh, the more we understand clearly these things, we, we can check ourselves. Yung, do we really submit to God's will? Is He really sovereign in our life? Is He really our Lord? Correct. Or, or madali lang, konting shake lang eh. Bumalik na naman tayo sa sarili nating yeah. 
Diba? Desires and needs and wants. Doon na naman tayo bumagsak. Yeah. Hindi na naman tayo nag... Uh, it's God's will. Eh. Bahala na si God. We just accept uh-huh. uh, that He is working out something good for those who love Him. Diba? Right. Uh, imagine that. Yeah. So yun lang. <laughs> yeah. Kaya nga, no? Um, uh, uh, so marang ang issue ngayon, uh, when the, the Lord says, you know, I'm going... I'm going there, prepare rooms, and then I'll come back to get you to be where I am. Remember John 14? Yeah. Today, you could have the second Peter people who will say, oh, babalik ba siya? 2,000 years na, hindi pa nga bumabalik eh. On the other hand, there are those who would say, huwag ka man bumalik kasi mm-hmm. I'm enjoying my life here. I'll, I'll give you an example. Just yesterday, I was talking with my sister, si Movita. And she was also attending another Bible study. And in that Bible study, ang tinanong ito, um, what, what is your idea and your thoughts about the Lord's return? That was the question in their cell group meeting. Then she was the first one who responded, Oh, I'm very excited. Sana bumalik ka si Lord. But, <laughs> kinakwenta niya nga, ni, ano, ni uh, Movita sa akin na, it is surprising from her point of view that there are those in the group who were saying, ah, wag muna ngayon kasi one of the person who answered kasi ikakasal pa lang ako eh. She's about to be, he's about to be married. Okay. Uh, time out. <laughs> wag muna ngayon. Siguro after my married, pag, siguro after my honeymoon or, or after, I mean, uh, there are people who are actually in a way saying, wag muna. No, I'm at the peak of my life right now. Ngayon pa lang nag- naging okay yung negosyo ko. Ngayon ka pa babalik? Ngayon pa lang lumalaki yung mga anak ko. Wag muna. And these are the thoughts and thinking of supposedly Christian people. Why? Because they never understand that the fullness, the fullness of the glorification of God, the fullness of our salvation is yet to come. Now, if you don't understand that, Amen. if yeah. you don't understand that, then you not, you not, you will not be calling Maranata. Yeah. In enjoy mo yung quote unquote blessings na meron yeah. ka dito. Yeah. See, Mary was holding on to Jesus. Okay? Holding from Him, departing. People today are holding on not to Jesus, they are holding on to the world. Huwag ka mo nang bumalik. Ganda-ganda ng buhay ko ngayon eh. I'm at the peak of everything. I'm at the peak of my health, peak of my finances, the peak of, you know, fill in the blank. Huwag mo na ngayon. Yeah. So, any more? Roxanne, Ira, Ruby, Isa, yes, Con, Yes, uh, everything everything that we have here on earth is just temporary mm-hmm. and what's more important is our eternal life with God our salvation mm-hmm. exactly and yeah. that's what a lot of people know but whether people understand is a different issue because when people say it's better to be in heaven to be with the Lord uh, I heard a pastor preacher prayed before, uh, preach before. Sabi niya pa, Christians are funny people. They're funny people. They want to be with the Lord, but they don't want to die. <laughs> I want. <laughs> I am a I just want to be where you are. <laughs> you know what that is saying? Dwelling daily in your presence. Do you know what that lyrics is saying? <laughs> I want to be dead. Dead. Now, I, I don't know if you come to a point now. No, I, I've been saying this many, many times now. Really, I hope personally, I prefer to be away from this body. I don't know if all of you would understand that, but um, yeah, I mean, what what else? What else? The only reason mm-hmm. that I'm living is, like Paul said, you know, to me to live is Christ. That's it. Yeah. 
and and yung Christ doon is a suffering messiah, di ba? Yung yeah. Uh-huh. Yung body niya na experience yung lahat ng temptation and pain uh-huh. ng ng world. Kaya sabi That's living. Po, saying this body is labor. Trabaho. In, for the kingdom of God. That's it. What are you living for? Right. You, you say, for example, ito, another example. You and I have studied and know that what you and I do today will be judged in the Bima Sit and be rewarded accordingly to what we have done in the kingdom of God here on earth today. Question. Mm-hmm. How are we as far, wh- what are we doing as far as the kingdom of God is concerned? Do you know it? Or do you truly understand that? If you truly understand that everything you and I does today is recorded and will be rewarded accordingly, it will dramatically change our lifestyle. Kailangan yung mga talents dinodoble-doble natin exactly. na binigay sa atin. Yeah. But ano sabi ni, ni, uh, ni Jesus? Kay Mary? Mary, you don't have the things of God. Your concerns are only human concerns. Okay. More? Isa? Um, Connie? June? Hi, Mike. Kailangan yes. tayo ng, ng mga believers magkaroon ng renewing of their minds. Mm-hmm. Kasi marami pa talaga ang ano. Marami pa yung hindi pa ano na parang sa kusarap church pa wag muna sa limo kanya wag muna marami na ko na rinig ng ganyan kasi yeah. hindi pa ako prepared Romans 12 na, mm. do not be conformed mhm okay hindi pa hindi pa ako hindi pa ako handa ko may pang hinahanda ang pa ba yun <laughs> yeah parang kaya, kaya isa um you are called where you are at right now uh Corinthians right you are where the Lord wants you to be. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your situation is. Right. Mm-hmm. You are where God wants you to be. Now, how, what, what is that? That's the sovereign will of God. Now, if you say you believe in the sovereign will of God, then therefore, I am this scholar, born in the Philippines, living in America, walang buhok, and everything, by the will of God. And I need to maximize anything and everything for the glory of God in my situation. Your situation is different than mine. All right. Okay? So, maximize. Yeah. So, Isa, sa, sa cell group mo, for example, you, you need to be the one teaching them. Hindi lang yung memorize natin itong verse na to, uh, Alam ko na yan. Eh, hindi eh. Uh, that, that's why, ano ba yung sabi ni Jesus sa, ano, sa disciples, Matthew 28. Go make disciples. All nations. Them. And then the last part, very important. Hello. Teach them to, them to obey. 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 At the last one, ay, nabaptize na. Amen, hallelujah. Nabaptize na siya. No, no, no. Teach them with a purpose to obey everything that I have taught. Exactly, everything. So. Kaya nga nito yung kami sa John pa hanggang ngayon. Nag-start ako sa John. Tuturo ko sa kanila yun. Who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. Yeah. Jesus. yeah. Make, make it your burden na when you see, you know, other people, uh, other believers around you who are not yet that needs to be elevated. Make it your burden. Make it your responsibility. Uh, yeah. you know, to 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 bring them, you know, closer to the Lord. Um, mm-hmm. and the word closer means understanding the word of God. Okay. Yeah, that's my so, purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Lowell, for example, you you are an elder in your church, so mm-hmm. um, the Lord has put you there for a purpose. Nothing mm-hmm. happens by accident. Okay. Um. Yeah. And I'm ministering now to gentlemen. Yung mga 50 and above na yung oldest namin, ano na, 80-something. 
Oh, despite this, ano, ha? All, all the pains, ha? Talagang hindi nag-absent yun. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, pero uh, again, that's why you have to emphasize. You know, some people think that being religious is about faithfulness, attendance, and so on. When in reality, it's about your life, your everyday life. Um, Hino pa? Connie? Carlos? Ako yung Mike, may question. Ang pa- ang- uh, let's go to Connie muna. Carl, uh, ladies first tayo. Ladies first. Ah, sige, Con. Ang paghahanda sa pagkamatay, hindi yung si Peter at mga kabaong. Ang paghahanda, where you will go ultimately between yeah. the two destinations exactly. kung saan. Kasi, kasi yung mga tao ngayon, ang pinaghahandaan nila, yung hihimlayan nila, yung lote, yung kabaong, mm-hmm. mga boritsik, ganun. Yeah. Ako, you... may, may, mayroon na akong nakasulat na ipitap. Mm-hmm. Dahil gusto ko ako mismo ang magsulat ng ipitap ko na somebody else. Tapos sinabihan ko na yung mga anak ko, do not pray for me. Kahit yung nakahimlay man lang tayo, kung mayroon mga unbelievers na makilamay, makita nila na, ay, hindi pala sila nagpre-pray sa mga dead. Eh no, kasi minamasama na, nila yun. Ito sila sabi ko sa nila yun. Ako mismo hindi ko pa nagagawa. Pero ito, gumawa ka na lang ng video mo, Con. Gumawa ka na ng video, video mo. Hindi ko na magsalita video. doon sa ano mo, sa funeral service mo. Eh <laughs> 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 di ako marunong magano ng mga ganyan, sinulat ko lang. Eh, camera mo lang yung, yung telepono mo lang, okay na yung telepono mo <laughs> <laughs> Nag-uusap kami ni Mrs. Ani Doktora Hubita Hadlock. I believe you know her. Yeah, Pero know daw her. siyang, may poem daw siya. Ano lang, two days ago, may poem daw siya about death. And then, yun nga, alam nating unbeliever. Dahil he was rebuked. Sabi niya, bakit gumagawa ka ng poem na foreboding death? Para daw, ano, ano yun. Yeah, kaya Parang inaano na niya yung mamamatay. Sabi ko, dyan natin malalaman kung sino ang believers at unbelievers by yeah. that alone. Yeah. Yeah. Tama. Okay, Carl, let's go to you. Ah, uh, nalapo balik dito sa Mary Magdalene yung question. Nung kasi nung nagbabasa ako ng parallel account do sa Mark. Si Mary Magdalene may kasama siya ano? Another Mary. Mary, mm-hmm. uh, Mother of James at Salome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yun lang nang parang na ano lang curious lang. Yeah. Uh, kasi John's purpose was not to have a detailed na nangyari. Okay? Uh, for example, dito, there are two angels. Uh, in I think Matthew, it says there's, there's an angel. So, it, it's not so much about the details. Um, for example, when Mary went there, the rock was already, the stone was already uh, taken out. But in the other gospels, you know, there was that morning, the Roman soldiers who were there, So, wala nang sinabi si, si, uh, si John about the Roman soldiers. Kasi ang in, his point in writing John 20 is not about the detail, but rather the main point. Verse 1 to 10, Jesus is resurrected, has, resurrect, has, has risen. That, that, that's the whole point. And then uh, ngayon, ang whole point is that disciples have heard, but they do not understand. Okay? That's that, that what it says, verse 9. They do not understand. So, hearing is good, but not good enough. Bible study is good. Going to church service is good, but it's not good enough. Lalo na tayo, kasi we came from the Catholic background. And in the Catholic background, it's more like, okay, ginawa ko na yung quote ako, yung responsibility ko. Nag-church na ako. Di ba? Yun ang parang typical mentality. It, it really doesn't matter kung nag-Facebook ka lang ba doon sa, sa, sa loob or you know you were doing your homework or uh, calculating your expenses sa bahay as long as nag-attend ako ng church. And then you feel good. You feel good. Pag-uwi mo sa bahay, mm. okay, nag-church na ba kayo? Ha? Nag-iabang pa. Nag-iabang. Nag-iabang. Ako tapos na. Hmm. Yes, Weng. <laughs> Sorry. There's something pala more on, the, on doctrine. You, you emphasized on Jesus na nag-ascend tapos nagpe-pray para sa atin, di ba? Interceding. Uh, oh, the interceding, uh, interceding. That's his uh, anong ministry yun? Is that his priestly ministry? Yung 
Yeah. To the prayer, yes. uh-huh. yeah, by God, uh, for the people, for the believers specifically, you know. Yeah. But uh, yan precisely ang doctrine ng ano yung kay Mary yung intercessor, inter uh-huh. uh, mediatrix of grace, uh-huh. di ba? Parang ganon. Na si Mary yung lumalapit kay God at pinagdadasal dala-dala yung mga tao na yeah. nagpe-pray sa kanya. Correct. Imagine the heresy, no? Grabe yung yeah. heresy na yan. Uh, diba merong mga pasulatan? Uh, if you want anything, ask. Ah, no. The Lord has said no. Ah, ano ba yun yung for 2,000 years? And then, what would you have asked her? Ask God. You know, something like that. Eh. I mean, that, that is totally, totally uh, you know, uh, false teaching. Parang abomination kasi... Uh, No. So, yung, 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 yung ginagawa ni Christ, binigay mo ngayon doon sa isang Amen. idol. Oh, idolatrous. Yeah. And by the way, today, right now, Mary is not even aware of it. Okay? So, oo nga, oo nga. So, but, but anyway, ang, ang mas serious to ito ngayon kasi this is subtle. This is subtle because these are for people who supposedly know scriptures but do not understand scriptures. So yung iba, let's say yung Catholicism or Buddhism or whatever, they have a totally wrong doctrine. Etong topic natin ngayon, these are people who have the right doctrine but do not understand it. Which is very subtle. Kasi ito yung mga tao, nag-church lagi, nag-Bible study, they call themselves Christians. But like Mary and like uh, the Thessalonians people, they were crying. Patay na si ganun. Patay na si ganyan. Yeah. Now, can, is it no? Is it wrong to cry? Of course not. Kaya sa pa ni Paul, we do not grieve like the rest of the world. Right. Now, if the person who died is totally known to be an unbeliever and yet he is he or she is a loved one, then siguro you need to cry. Okay. Yeah. Baka yeah. magigilty ka. Naku, hindi ko na-explain sa kanya yung gospel. Yeah. <laughs> Iyak Kaso siguro. Sa pano, Pero at the same time, Weng, you know, I also feel that way, Weng. Pero, oh. I, I don't know, I think I have changed my my situation on that. Kasi, then I I know the perseverance of the saints. And the irresistible grace. Which means Amen. that the person who didn't receive the Christ, in the end, he was the, he was the one who didn't respond. He was the one who didn't respond. Now, uh, I, might have less, I, I might have less reward for not doing my best. Okay? So that is what I will miss out. I will, uh, you know, uh, reduce yung rewards na makukuha ko kasi I didn't... Bawasan yung crown. Yung, ano yeah. Na isang, na isang, ano, na isang diamond. <laughs> okay. Anyway, Mike? Yes. Mike? Mike. Yes, go on. If we oh. have if we have religiously ano ano shared the gospel and then they still refuse. Mm-hmm. Hindi kaya isang indication yun na they are not really chosen. That is not hindi lang siguradong hindi chosen. Oh. But yeah. at the same time kon as long as that person is alive maybe you will see yes, yes. her again. Oh. Baka in the future. May chance so, pa. Oh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see how all these doctrines come together? If you miss out one of them, there's something lacking. But if you put them all together, whew, you could relax and say, Wow. God is good. Truly, God is good. And not just God is good dahil, oh, you know, Brines talaga ako. Wow, God is good. Hindi yun eh. It's different. Eh? Dan, I'm sorry. Yeah, nagkataas ka na kamay mo kayo na pa. Uh, actually, medyo funny to pero true story. Uh, yung nga, may, yung namatayan, instead na sinabing condolence, congratulations. Basta Christian yung ko na. Uh, I, I know a very close uh, Uh, person na nagsinabihan niya yung widow na ganyan. And the widow understood. Parang silang believer eh. So, uh, she did not take it uh, as an offense. Uh, congratulations yeah. talaga. In the same way, 
Uh, ako nga po nagbibiro sa inauguration ni Nila Mayang nung business nila. Tapos mm-hmm. nagkamali yung, di ba, may binibigyan na kung, ano, flowers sa inauguration oh. ng building. Nagkamali yun, naibigay padala sa puneraria. Yung nakasulat, congratulations. <laughs> Pero mabuti lang, Christian yung nakareceive, di ba? <laughs> Pero, uh, yeah, tama ka dyan, no? Congratulations. But, but even if the person is a Christian, ito na yung issue natin ngayon, eh that there are Christians who are illiterate of the Word of God. So, yeah, kaya, you know, mga congratulations, be, be careful lang, okay? Um, you, you have to, you know, kailangan medyo marunong yes. sumayaw. For those who understand that, that For those who understand. Oh, yeah. Mm-mm. Okay. Roxanne, you've been quiet. Anything on your side? Mike, what about if your crowd is... Uh, okay, you're discussing about Jesus and then parang they're really insistent on Mary. So mm-hmm. ako, I decide na lang not to go on with 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 sharing the gospel kasi really they're parang um, they're uh, an, oh, oh, parang katoliko, kandad like, no, it, it, it's I know, it, I said it's not in in the I, I I always end up with saying that it's not in the scriptures. Uh huh. Yeah. You, you know what? Us, uh, Jesus and all the disciples when they shared the gospel, they did not they did not necessarily talk about the wrong practices of Judaism. Uh, what they spoke about is the gospel, because yeah. sometimes when we try to to disciple a person who is not in Christ, if the person is not in Christ, he or she does not have the Holy Spirit. If he or she doesn't have the Holy Spirit, there is no conviction from the inside. Then you're just trying to battle the person sa sino mas matalino sa atin. Sino mas magaling. So really, it's all about the gospel. You always have to bring it back to sin. To sin. Yeah. And how are you going to solve the sin problem? Because not until they accept that, there's really no point of teaching Sora Scriptura, doctrine Sora there's, there's no point. Because they will not understand that. And even if they heard that, they will not accept that. So, you know, they will insist well, on Mary. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, I I also touched on repentance. Mm-mm. On man being evil. Mm-mm. Pero they will all say, no, but God is love. Mm-hmm. They, they always they always have yeah. answers. Yeah. Well, well, again, that is where you will have to, I guess, explain. I mean, because they have a wrong understanding of love. If God is love, then why is there hell? Because they're they're un- the way they say that, it looks like well, God is love, so therefore, you know, He will not permit anybody to go to hell. Mm-hmm. But the the Word of God speaks a lot more about hell than heaven. So yeah, uh, again, maybe it, you know, it's it's because really of the ignorance of the Bible. Not yeah. unless they will really read uh, and I mean, understand. No, makikipag oh, argue lang sila. Mm-hmm. Naranasan ko na yan, in, Roxanne. This is where you come in, Roxanne, to try to explain it. And remember, do not come into, you know, don't, don't go to them with your own opinion as Roxanne. Always bring them back to scriptures. Yeah. Okay. Because when Actually, you. Actually, I told uh, them, I told them to read uh, Romans chapter 1 to 3. Yeah, but you cannot just tell them read. They, they will not understand it. Uh, read it's it. You have to explain it. Okay. With the patience, ang kailangan kasi sometimes they they react emotionally, eh. and yeah. and when that happens, ano Roxanne, yeah. Yeah. wala na hindi na nakikinig yon. Kaya tanda ng sasabihin mo, then you know, kung ano ano na sa patnim. Well, you know, 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 well, you Ano, super Catholic oh, <laughs> sa Couples for Christ. Teacher uh, pwede po, si Lowell. Uh, so, uh, nagbibigay na ng God. tapos unit head na kami, nag-handle ng mga household leaders. Oh. But, but ano, ganun eh, may tendency sila na mga Catholics that they react emotionally. Naku, wag nyong galawin yung Mama Mary. Na, yung mga tipong ganun na yung hirit. Oh. You, you should know when to back down din. Kaya kailangan ipag-pray mo rin yung sarili mo kasi otherwise sasakay ka dun sa argument 
argumentative yung nagiging pag-uusap, di ba? Yeah. Hindi hindi rin na eh, counterproductive lalo. And uh, but, but I, I was thinking Mike, yes. well kung nangyari yun, well well, that's God's ano eh. Yun yung inalaw niya. Oh, na, na, na-mute ka, Weng. Na-mute ka. Napindot po. Ayun. I'm just praying na kung mag-isa na lang siya tapos nag-iisip-isip siya, totoo kaya yung sinasabi ni Lowell sa kanya, saka siya mag, ano, yeah. mag-iisip. Anyway, yeah. it's still God's ano, uh, ministry. It's still God who is building the church, di ba? Siya pa rin ang namin. So, so, in a way, Roxanne, quote-unquote, drop the bomb. Okay? Say it. Now, some of them will hate you or all of them will hate you. But there's a point where you will just say, you know, you have to dust off your feet because there are millions of other people around you who need to hear the gospel. So we are not there. We are not assigned to person A. Tapos person A, wag kang magigiba hanggang maging Christian talaga yan. No. no nowhere is going to say that. But that, that, I, that's not the mandate. Um, go into all the world. Right? Uh, Jerusalem. Yes, June. Uh, uh, I fully submit to the sovereignty of God mm-hmm. based on the scriptures. What made me curious in our topic tonight is in relation to Mary. Mary. Mm-hmm. We know pretty well that for the past three years, of Jesus' life on earth. He was being surrounded by his disciples, which are all men. And mm-hmm. every teaching that he had were listened by his disciples. Now, what made me curious, Mike, is this. Why did the Lord Jesus Christ allow Mary to be the first witness of his resurrection? These are curious questions of mine only, I know. Maybe I can ask this when I go to heaven. Because well, no, the, the, the first... maybe because they are in doubt, right? They, the men are fully in doubt that Mary. Well, actually, look with me. Okay? Oh. Let me. Let me go to the text here, okay? Let's stick to the oh. text. Um, oh. Let me go here, Romans. Ah, Romans. I mean, John. Ang kana ba John? Nasa ang kana John? Okay, hold on. John 20, verse 8, I believe. Look. So, sino unang, sino ang dumating doon? Si Mary. Dalawang Mary. Yeah. Tapos, later on, si Peter, tumakbo. Una, naunang dumating si John, pero hindi, hindi pumalo si John. Peter, when he arrived, he went in. And then John also followed. Okay? And then verse 20, verse, um, let me see kung verse 20 ba yun. Uh, ano, verse 20? I mean, verse 8. Uh, verse 9 says, uh, verse 8, Finally, the other disciple, who's that? See, John, who had reached the tomb first, okay, also went inside. Now, take note. He yes, saw, sir. what did he see? Empty tomb. An empty tomb. And when he saw an empty tomb, what happened? He believed. Oh, there you go. So he believed. It was only John who believed that Jesus after seeing that the tomb was empty, believed that Jesus resurrected from the dead. He believed. Then he makes a comment in verse 9. They, who's the they? Everybody else. At the, at the bare minimum, they, Martha, Mary, uh, 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 Mary Magdalene, uh, Mary, the other Mary, uh, Peter, uh, at the bare minimum, yung tato na yun, they, did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Because he was making a comparison of him that when he saw, he believed. They also saw, but did not believe because they did not understand. Now, the will, the day, will the day include the rest of the disciples? Most likely. All of them did not understand. That's why they were weeping. That's why they were locked in their room. They were afraid. They were afraid. And by the way, yeah. as we will go to the next lesson, that is the same reason why many Christians are quote-unquote <laughs> locked in their room today. Correct, correct. Yeah. 
And Mary Magdalene, uh, your question was, why did God permit Mary Magdalene to be the first one to, to, to see? Well, actually, thought? it's not in a positive way. It, it is in a negative way. God permitted Mary Magdalene, the first person, to display her unbelief. Mm -hmm. Not of her belief, of her unbelief. Because yeah. that is the picture of the rest of the disciples, including for many of us today. Okay, but Joanne? Okay, okay, Mike. Mm. Uh, maybe because also, Mike, when this, this catapulted to a strong belief of the Catholic Church about the women, that women are more in their belief, in their doctrine. Mary is the mother of God. It's more of Superiority of women. Yeah, pero that was Mary Magdalene. That was Mary Magdalene. Oh yeah, yeah. I I know Mary Magdalene, but on the other hand, the mother of Jesus became the mother of God. Para bang Mike? Para bang they are exalting the women? That, uh, yeah. Uh, about, about the Catholic doctrine, lang about yeah. Ah uh, yeah. Uh, the mother Jesus now in in there. I know is mother of God, which is oh yeah, not true at all. Yeah. Mga dagdag na ano yan eh, katikisim nila, doctrine nila. Yes, correct. Uh, sa old Catholic ano, uh, theology, wala yan. <laughs> Yung pagkaalam ko sa inyo. Kaya nga, di ba, we always say Sora Scriptura. Because so, the tendency of man is to correct. to keep on adding. Right. Uh, for example, uh, church, church uh, service. Right? Andalit ang wag. For example, church service. Right. Where in the Bible that it says that it has to be an hour and a half or two hours? Where does it says, where does it say that the program must be worship, announcement, and then special number, kumeron man, tapos word, tapos last song, and then where? Nowhere. But that has become the system. And as if, pag hindi mo ginawa in that way, parang, oh, hindi entered service. You see, uh, ano eh, and if we do not go back to scriptures, then ano magiging basis natin? Yeah. We right. can easily depart. And that is the problem with Catholicism because the Bible is, is not the center of life and living. Hindi, hindi central ang, ano, ang scriptures. Yeah. It is there, nandiyan siya, pero hindi siya yung the authority. Not the authority. Yes. Okay, wait, let's go. Totoo, totoo yan, Mike. Totoo. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to say lang kanina na yung mukhang yung pag pag elevate ni Mary doon sa mga doctrines ng coronation, di ba ano yan? Assumption ng coronation. coronation. At saka yung Immaculate Conception. Parang ang kasabay noon sa world is yung the rise of feminism. So mukhang ano talaga, the Satan has, is also doing his work of ano. That's why, di ba, sabi niya, yeah. behind me Satan. Anything you and I do in the name of Christ that is not in line with Christ and his word is coming from Satan. So, yeah. has Satan been influencing you? <laughs> He's at work. <laughs> He's at work. Yes. He's definitely at work. Mayroong ano niyan? Mayroong preaching si John Mac John. The idolatry of Mary. Mabuting pakinggan ninyo yun. The idea anyway, that of Mary. Yeah, but remember, our topic is not about Mary. Our topic uh, is about Christians who supposedly know uh, scriptures but do not understand scriptures. Result, weeping, crying, uh, you know, uh, worrying, and so on. Bakit ako may problema, Lord? Alisin mo! Uh, I mean, Lord, ako mo na nagpadala niya ni. Mike, iyon ang isa kasi na kung bakit natatapik yan si Mary. Kasi yun ang isang ano primary reason nila na parang hindi ni sila ano, kumbinsido sa sabihin na nating born again. Kayo naman ang, ang pagkasabi nila sa atin na we are a born again church na hindi naman yan ang meaning ng born again. Yeah, kaya nga. Again, ang isa kasi family. nila, they will depart from Mary. Yeah. Kasi guys, iniisip nila na hindi naman kayo naniniwala kay Mary. Yun ang, ako, tinanong Again, ako yan. Hindi uh, naman kayo naniniwala kay Mary. Let's not worry about Catholicism. That is not our topic. I'm talking right now about you and I as Christians who supposedly know scriptures but do not understand scriptures. 
And the proof of not understanding, understanding scriptures is the way you act in your life, the way you respond to problem, the way you respond to situation, the way you view uh, the geopolitical situations of the world. That is, uh, how do you see it? Lower showed earlier yung, the building of the largest mosque in the world in Sambuanga City under construction right now. How do you see it? Do you pray, Lord, sana, sana matumba yung poste, sana? Is that what you pray for? No. Okay. Uh, Mike, you know, meron nga ano, sa amin, Mike, na ano, sa amin, sa ano, na nag-pray ng Sojik B kasi ano, na approved na daw, mahinda. Ano, ano? Inag-pray ang ano? Sojik B. Sojik B. Yun sa mga bakla. Oh, ano, okay. Yung, oh. Marriage. Gay marriage oh. Sexual, sexual oh. orientation, gender oh. and oh. equality oh. bill. Oh. Yeah, kasi, uh, you know what? Here's the problem of Christianity. Many Christians today, without even realizing it, they have become the so social gospel. We, we want to change yeah. the, the social system of the world. That is not what we are called for. Yeah. We right. are called to tell people that they are on their way to hell. And unless they put their trust in Christ, they're gone forever. Right. We are here to, to stop lesbianism. And oh, yeah, that is true. But that, that can only be changed as people come to know Christ. Yes. Oh. The only after way. all, after all, sinabi na talaga yan, na in the last days, people will be lovers oh, of themselves. Na yan. Na yan, yeah. Predicted na yan, prophesied na yan. And when you teachers, eh, they will seek teachers who who will teach yung masarap sa tinga nila. Oh. So, ala ka na kung kanino ka makinig. Am I expecting Joel Austin? Yes, I'm expecting plenty of Joel Austins in the world. Plenty. You know what, guys? It is way, way, way <laughs> over time. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, let, let's set aside first Catholicism, okay? The, uh, the, the most important part here is are we included in that day? Because John is the only one it seems like who have believed. He saw and believed. That is one group of people the John people the rest are they people. And both are claiming to be Christians. Both a claim to be followers of Christ. Only one, you see John, saw and believed. The rest, still, hindi pa. They need to, they have lots of uh, room for growth. Did not understand. So, do not focus on uh, other things around us um, for this lesson. Focus on do you truly understand what we have been learning, all of these things? Because, I know, um, sayang, sayang. Now is the gate. Mm. Yeah. Okay, let's close. Let's close. Okay. If you want, if you have any more questions, you can stay and let's continue. But otherwise, let's officially close so people can can sign off if they need to. Let's pray, Father. Thank you so much again for your word. Again, your word Lord, is the basis of all truth. Your word is truth. Your word sanctifies. And yes, pray, Lord, ngayon, uh, not only are we get to know more information about scriptures, but truly that we would understand. Because it's mm -hmm. only when we understand uh, the things that's going on around us uh, with the lens of your word, with the lens of faith, can really mm -hmm. we be saying, Amen, praise the Lord, when the rest of the world is grieving and crying. Father, it seems like in, in this particular topic right now that there are Christians like Mary Magdalene who cried when in fact she should be rejoicing that you have risen from the dead. All because she doesn't understand what scripture has said. She heard it. You explained it. But she did not understand. Only John believed. Father, I ask that now uh, every single person in this room, Danny, Ruby, Roxanne, Lowell, Isa, Carlos, Connie, Ira, June, myself, Lord, that we would be people, your people, 
who would really truly understand not only for our own sake, but that we are able to become blessing to other people around us. So we thank you and we praise you, Lord. And we're looking forward for your return when you're going to glorify us. Amen. 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 Amen.